Hello YouTube, I'm back for the next BattleBots review, and today I have the two BattleBots DVDs, the only two that ever actually exist, because they didn't release the show on DVD, they have not, of, of either version, they have not released the Comedy Central show on DVD. Granted, there were DVDs available for the builders to buy, featuring their robots, but that doesn't really count. We have not gotten any DVDs, there were kind of sort of hints for the, uh, of a, you know, back when BattleBots was still searching for a show, they ended up having, there's one episode of the show, of the 2009 event on, yeah, because apparently they were kind of starting to get things going, although I'm not sure why they went that far when the show was not even, this was not even going to be televised. There's one show on YouTube, there's one episode, that was all that was, all that was actually ever produced, but this is going to go through the actual two pay-per-view events that actually got released on DVD, Oh, they're about two hours long each, roughly. Maybe a little less for uh, this one, or uh, no, this this one. All right, I'm getting getting them. They're kind of facing in opposite directions here. This is the DVD that started it. This is afterwards. I'll put this one as uh, put this one aside for the moment. I'm going to review this one first. This is more of a clip show. This is basically goes gives you an idea of what BattleBots was like way back in 1999. See what the hazards were like, see what the builders were like, see what their robots were, and a lot of them were different than how they were. They were not the robots we typically know of today. And a couple of them were. But I think for the most part, I mean, Mike Regan had Death Trap back in the day, which is a lifting arm. I mean, I don't think most of the robots in the competition were even remotely what the robots they had in Comedy Central later on. And, of course, in the 20s, in the uh, reboot of the show, I think most of the builders have gone on, didn't uh, compete in there. I think, I'm trying to think, recalling the uh, review that Mr. Psycho went through, I think it was involved, I think Biohazard and Vlad were probably the only ones that might have been in the competition at that time. Yeah, Biohazard was. I think Vlad was too, but for the most part, most of the robots were not, I think Slam was in there too. Slam was orange, I think, back in the day. But I think most of the robots in their event were not, they were not what we typically expected to see later on in uh, Comedy Central and, of course, in the uh, reboot of the show on ABC. But it's kind of interesting. I mean, it would be it kind of would have been nice if they had showed the fights, but given that it was all a whole bunch of clips, they probably weren't very exciting. But I think for most of us, we'd want to see that anyway, because it's a part of the history of the sport. I mean, it's also interesting to see what it was like back in the day. I mean, you could see how much... Uh, things have changed. I mean, you look at Ian Lewis and the builders of Razor, they were in this, this as well, I believe. They were quite different. I think uh, Ian Lewis had a, or uh, no, was it Simon Scott, I think, actually had a pony, had a ponytail for a change. You don't see him with that anymore, I don't think. Maybe. Here's the back. This will give you some idea of what went on. I don't know if you can see it all that well. There's a couple robots in here. I mean, Oh yeah, Tazbot I think is in this as well, but I'd say it's definitely worth a watch. I mean, it's not the most exciting, so don't get to, uh, don't see a whole lot of destruction. I mean, most of it because partly because the hazards are not all that strong back in the day. Got little spikes coming out of the floor. They're really, really narrow. No, not like the even the ram rods that came up later on in the or even the Robot Wars floor spikes. They're pretty narrow. I I think this was also Christian Carlberg's design, although I felt like it was more of the Las Vegas event, that he built the hazards for that event and not the uh, Long Beach. And this is also, I think, where we see Son of Smashy. Son of Smashy was the robot, the first robot that Derek Young had built for this competition, I believe. It was, and it ended up being successful, taking home the championship. So, I mean, granted, it was probably a good deal of luck. I think it was at least a couple of robots that probably could have beaten it and didn't. Like Dead Blow, like the unfortunate thing where they separated it, and supposedly what happened was pulled the battery wire out when they separated them. And Dead Blow couldn't move after that. But it looked formidable. I mean, Dead Blow was awesome back in that event. I kind of wish they kept that. It looked like it was a much stronger hammer than I had it otherwise. And it could rotate 360. It rotate 180 degrees. Like Salad. I uh, then know Sal was also a four-wheel bot. I mean, it would have been interesting to see how Devlo would have... He probably could have self-righted with that. The hammer looked pretty strong. It had a lot more range of motion. looked stronger. It certainly would not have broken in its bout with uh, Alien Gladiator in Season 1 of the, the Comedy Central series. 
I think a lot of bots, yeah, I think Frenzy was in this as well. Nightmare, yeah, Nightmare was in every event, so it's legend. It's probably one of the, among the legends, along with the... Uh, I even had, uh, let's see, I don't think I had too much success back in that event either. It hasn't really, it's been kind of up and down. Does okay in some events, and other events, like, okay, they did a little bit better here. I mean, the best it did was the quarterfinals, really, and uh, it's BattleBots run, but still, it's a robot to watch. Everyone, I think, enjoys seeing Nightmare on there, whether it wins or loses. I don't think of any other robots that were in there. Was Mauler in there? I feel like it might have been. But it would have been the tall, the tall, the uh, Mauler 2000 version, the one that it's also seen in Season 1 of BattleBots and various other events at the time. And, of course, in 2002, kind of sort of comes back. But yeah, it's, I mean, it can be dull in places because you're not seeing a huge amount of action in this because the robots are kind of primitive. The arena is rather, you know, primitive as well. But I've watched it at least a couple times now and then. So the other event's a little bit better. I'm going to get into that now. Here it is. Here's a better view of the DVD that I was uh, holding up earlier. This is the World Championship. It's also Las Vegas 1999. This is the other, other event. Oop, I should probably hold that up the right way up. Although, oddly enough, unlike the other DVDs, you probably noticed, it's not done the same way. And maybe because of the way it's, it was a title here. It's got a kind of a long subtitle here, but I don't know. I don't know if they needed the entire thing written on the side. You can see in the back, it's a little bit different. Obviously, yes, Mechadon. That's back in the day when Mechadon was, uh, most, it was mostly still an attraction, main attraction over there. Didn't really have any success. And you can see it's got the gear. If you notice, that uh, Mechadon has a little gear on the back. That's where the, this is the version that gets made in the McDonald's toy. It's kind of weird, though. You wouldn't think they would remember that from that long ago. That was in 2002. It was about three years three years later. But this one has a little more excitement. You actually get a few of the fights. A lot of them are highlighted, again, but you still get a bunch of the fights. Get to see how they were back in the day. And you'll see where Vlad gets the uh, damage that it's shown in Season 1. I believe they do actually show there's a puncture mark from uh, Vlad the Impaler from uh, Rhino. Rhino actually takes it on. There's some pretty decent fights out of there, and Vlad kind of makes it a lot. I mean, some of the highlights are, aren't that bad. But still, I think a lot of us would like to see the full fights. I mean, there are a couple of fights on YouTube. I think Derek Young and his robot, Son of Smashy, there are a couple of his, I think his fights are on there in raw footage. So you can see what it was like. Of course, it's kind of long and drawn out, because, I mean, they're, all the uh, filler is there and all that, but it's kind of surprising. This is also where Biohazard is flipped, even with the anti-wedge skirts. Yes, Vlad the Impaler gets under Biohazard and probably one of the luckiest breaks it ever has in competition. Gets it on its back in just the perfect way, such that Biohazard is sloped on Vlad's back end and then just but Vlad just floors it across the arena, and I think a little bit of help, Biohazard raising the arm, and the kill saw is coming up at pretty much that exact moment, flips Biohazard over, and he cannot self-right. He never does that again any time later on in, the, in, the, uh, in its run, which includes up to Season 3, which is where its run comes to an end. But, man, just to think Biohazard having that on... Fortunate luck. I mean, even the previous year, Biohazard did not have any wedge skirts, and ironically, if he had, he would have been able to self-right and continue this, but Vlad would have won that regardless, because, I mean, unless Biohazard got really lucky, those wedge skirts are really what helped it become the most successful bot in the sport until, until it was eventually beaten, until it was eventually outclassed in uh, 2005, I believe, by Brutality. Actually, no, it doesn't, yeah, it was uh, Super Megabyte and Brutality were both the ones that basically said to force Biohazard to, to retire. And we still have no idea whether it's going to be in the third season of ABC's BattleBots. I mean, granted, we don't even have season three even confirmed as being a thing yet. We all want it to happen, but it's not there yet. This is definitely the more interesting of the two DVDs. I mean, as I said, there are actual matches in there. There are actual interviews. You'll get to see an animatronic uh, sort of, you know, that predates the uh, Drag Race and Christmas Tree that we see in later quote-unquote, uh, Drag Race Christmas Tree that we see in uh, BattleBots in later years, and even in the ABC reboot, although it is more modernized. It is now one light that changes color. You know, changes color from the usual, but it still follows the same pattern that the original one had. I would recommend them. 
I would definitely recommend both of these. I would say this one's probably a little bit more interesting because of all the matches that are featured in it. You get highlights of the previous, you get to see. I mean, they do have a, the pre-battle stats, battle stats featured in the CompuBot stats, as they call it. But you still get to see their overall win, the win. You get to see some of the tension that goes on there. I know in later later matches, you get to see some of the some of the problems that ends up going underway with uh, you know certain builders when they're fighting to get their robot back into shape. This really gives you an idea of just how difficult it can be to get your robot back into shape given a certain time limit. I mean, nowadays, Robot Wars is like two hours to get your robot done. That can seem like a, it really depends on how much damage your bot takes during the match. If it takes a lot of damage, then two hours is probably going to seem like a very small amount of time. Or it can seem like a lot of time if your robot didn't take any damage or very little damage at all. But that means you get a lot less pressure to uh, get your robot done. You can get it done and then just chill out and whatever you want to do at the time. But it would have been nice if they continued to actually make these DVDs and actually release the uh, Comedy Central series on DVD. That would have been a huge seller, and I still would recommend them to do that. So, if any of you uh, BattleBots producers out there are watching this video, please bring this on DVD. We all want to see the show on DVD and probably clear-cut quality. I mean, yeah, it's well after the original show aired, but I mean, you had the opportunity, a big opportunity, and I think there were indications you were going to do that, but the show got taken off the air. Still, I'd release it on DVD, even if it was only a few months or days after the show was over. You know, it completely ended its run. That doesn't mean people are not caring. They want the show on DVD. Even today, we want the show on DVD. We want the game that came, that was uh, released later as well. That was going to be released, and then it got canned because Comedy Central taking the show off the air. And MTV saying, nope, no robots for you. No fighting for you. That's kind of sort of part of why it was. And it was also ex expensive to keep the show running, I think the way I understood it is season 6 is going to have like uh, probably even more robots, they probably just could not afford to have the show continue, but if you look at season 5 of the show, it was going to be a disaster, it was already a disaster to begin with because, I mean, first they screwed over, screwed us over by changing the time slot, I think that was just so every, more people would be awake, but that's kind of counterintuitive considering the fact that we got used to seeing it on 10 o'clock if you were in uh, the East Coast, I was not, I was in the... Midwest, so I got to see it at 9 o'clock. That was awesome. That was perfect for me. I got to stay up, watch the show, and then just go right to bed. Made it for, uh, good, time. Made it for uh, good times there. And then I said, okay, we'll have it on an hour earlier on a Saturday. You just screwed everyone over, and this is sort of what uh, ABC did with season 2 of the uh, reboot of the show. They changed the time slot. It used to be on Sundays. Everyone got used to that, and then they changed it. And I think that was partially why. And then they messed around the schedule even further just so they could have the attempt at seeing, you know, okay, we think you guys are going to watch this one, the BattleBots, we'll put that on instead, which pissed off a lot of people, I'm sure. And that's what I've read. That definitely people were definitely not happy about it, especially since some didn't even get to see it. It screwed up TV recordings. So if you had it recorded, you know, season pass or whatever they call it now on TiVo or whatever you use to record your shows, they screwed it over. So it recorded something that was not BattleBots and then did not record what should have been BattleBots. You got screwed over, and some people didn't even get the finals of season two. Pretty sad. So I'm hoping that with this long wait that we've gone through so far, that we'll finally have season two announced or season three announced. It, if nothing else, at least announced this year and then airing next year in June or whatever what whatever they want to do with it. I'm sure we we have not gotten cancellation and we know that we know that when BattleBots was canceled for season six, they made an announcement for it. It was announced on the BattleBots website. But they were not renewing it. So I have faith that they're gonna if they're going to cancel it, which I don't think they will. They will announce it. That would be big news. They would want everyone to hear that this is not going to happen anymore. Of course, this is probably going to have fans upset. They're going to want to go, please don't do this. We like the show. We want to see it back for another season or whatever. But be that as it may, it's still up in the air whether they're actually going to do another season. I would love them to do another season. Season 2 was much better over Season 1. A lot more action. The Hadges played a deeper role into this. But... 
Of course, most of this is for another video. I mean, I've done the reviews on both DVDs. So that's my review on the BattleBots pay-per-view Long Beach 1999 and the Las Vegas 1999 World Championship DVDs. Thanks for watching.